Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnBoon.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a reversible apron. I've been talking a lot about DIY Christmas gifts here on my channel and on the blog because obviously Christmas is coming. This is something that I actually came up with several years ago. I was over at my in-law's house for Thanksgiving and I saw my mother-in-law wearing a reversible apron that I made her probably close to 10 years ago. Got me thinking that I should share it on here. So it's a super simple process. It's for the beginning sewer. And of course you can make this for any time of the year. I kind of made mine a little bit of a Christmas theme. It'd be pretty hanging on a hook in the kitchen for Christmas decor or really just any time. I'd like to make a blue version of this. The one I had made for her had sunflowers. Be pretty with linen. I'll leave some links in the description below for fabric ideas as well as these particular fabrics that I found for Christmas. Now for this project, I use a yard and a half each of two different fabrics. So start by taking two rectangles, 30 inches wide by 33 inches long. Now one will be for one side of the apron, one will be for the other, so make sure that they're coordinating. Of course, they don't have to be. Now to get the armhole at the top of the apron pieces, take one of the 33 by 30 inch apron pieces, fold it in half lengthwise, and then make a mark six inches from the fold and nine inches down the side. Now you'll just take a fabric marker or just use your finger like I did to eyeball and connect those two spots along a curve and just cut along that curve. If you would rather not eyeball it, you don't have an erasable fabric marker, you can also just place pins and follow that mark with your scissors. The goal is just to create a curve from the top marking and the side marking. Repeat with the other apron piece, so the other 33 by 30 inch piece. Next, cut out the strap pieces. You'll need two for the straps to go around the neck and two for the straps to go around the waist. So cut two 25 inches by two and a half inches and two 40 inches by two and a half inches wide. You'll also cut two pocket pieces, 17 inches wide by 10 inches long, one in one of the fabrics and one in the other. After you've cut out your pieces, it's time to prepare the strap pieces and the pocket pieces. So for the strap pieces, just fold them in half lengthwise and sew down the long edge. Now when you get to one of the ends, fold it back, so towards the wrong side of the fabric, and continue sewing. That is just so that the top edge will be finished off. Repeat that for all four straps and then use a large safety pin to turn them right side out. After you've turned them right side out, go ahead and do a top stitch all the way down both long sides and the short edge that you'd fold it under. I like top stitches because they just make everything have a nice clean finished look. You don't really have to do them, but I like to do a nice top stitch that's very straight close to the outside edge of a piece. Next, to prepare the pocket piece, on all four sides, fold the fabric toward the wrong side over about a half inch and then another half inch and then press in place. Just do that on all four sides. Next, go over to your machine and sew a hem 
at the top edge of the pocket. This is because you won't be sewing this part to the apron. Now the other three sides will be sewn to the apron so you won't have to finish them off at this point. Repeat with the other pocket piece. Next, I placed the pockets. Now the reason for that is you don't want to sew them on later because the stitching is hidden inside of the apron. So I just placed the pocket piece 14 and a half inches from the top unfinished edge of one of the apron pieces and seven and a quarter inches from each side. So basically it's just centered in the middle of an apron piece and then about 14 and a half inches from the top. You could put one color on one side and the other color on the other side so it's kind of a coordinating pocket. I wanted to keep mine really simple on both sides. So I just did the check pocket with the check apron and the plaid pocket with the plaid apron. I did lay them on the other way just to see how they look and I kind of like this way better, but that's always an option depending on what fabric you use to kind of swap it up and do something coordinating. Might also be fun if you're making like a kid's apron to use some really colorful fabrics and then mix it up just to make it more fun. After you've pinned the pocket in place, sew around the three unfinished edges that you had already folded and pressed over. After the pockets are sewn in place on both the front apron piece and the back apron piece, find the center point of the pocket after hemming. Mine was about seven and a quarter inches from either side. And then just sew a straight line down the middle. This just creates two pockets in the front of the apron and repeat for the other apron piece. So now you have two apron pieces, both each with two pockets. So next I sandwiched the two apron pieces together. Now before doing that, I took my finished tie pieces and I placed the two short ones near the top outside edges of the apron and the two long ones near the waist part. So just below where the armholes and on the sides. If you can visualize that and you can see here. I repeated that for the other apron piece. Next I took the apron piece that had the ties pinned to it, laid it down face up, and then took the other apron piece and with right sides together placed it on top so that they matched up. And then I just sewed all the way around with a half inch seam. Now I did stop at the bottom and create a little opening. I like to do that at the bottom because it's the least noticeable place. This will be the spot that you're turning the aprons out so that all of the raw edges are nicely hidden inside. After that, I clipped around the curve on the spot that will go under the arms. That's just to create less bulk when turning it out. I also clipped... You are being so loud, Daniel. Next, I clipped all of the corners, again, to create less bulk. After that, I turned the apron right side out through the hole I left in the bottom. And then I just went all the way around the apron with a narrow top stitch, basically probably about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the apron all the way around. And this is the finished product. This would make an excellent gift for Christmas. They sew up really fast, especially if you're going to be making several of them at once. If you wanna make one for maybe your mother-in-law or your grandma or your grandma-in-law, they are a great gift to bring to Christmas. Maybe you could wrap it up with a bow and a rolling pin or something baking related. Maybe you could put it with one of those mason jar DIY cookie mix where all you add is the butter and the eggs. I could think of so many baking themed gifts to do and it also is just something that has a little bit of a personal touch because someone knows that you didn't just go and buy it, you made it for them, which is extra special. And you'll remember for years to come, like when I saw my mother-in-law bust her apron out on Thanksgiving and I remembered back when Ruth was probably in this wrap or Johanna, I was making her that apron and it was just a cool reminder. I will leave links to all of the other DIY gift ideas in the description box. I have a great gift basket with free printable labels. You can check that out. That's a good last minute gift idea that you could make for people. And a few other ideas on a video I just made recently as well. Also, if you are brand new to sewing, you really wanna to learn to sew, this all just looks super overwhelming to you. I have a free sewing course called the Simple Sewing Series. 
You just have to go to farmhousonboon.com slash learn to sew and everything from threading a needle to creating a hem and a seam, it's all very basic stuff I have there. So if your resolution is to learn how to sew in the new year, so if your new year's resolution is to learn how to sew, that would be a great thing to check out. You better stop this, buddy. All right, well, if you are brand new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.